And many divers across the United States have also been watching this rescue with the knowledge of this mission's complexity. News 2's Libba Holland spoke with some of our local divers to see exactly what would go into this type of mission. Wayne Harris has been diving since he was a young boy. Started diving with my dad in just little shallow water, diving coastal waterways into diving shipwrecks, uh, cave diving. And after his time in the Army, he got his commercial diving certification, which is when this heavy duty equipment is typically used. You have an air source that's never ending, and then your bailout, which is what they did not have. He says the rescue team in Thailand didn't have any of this equipment. You had to really go bare bones. Because of the cave entry and exit, you get snagged, you can get caught up on any variation of things, and you have to follow a line in and out. If something were to happen to your line in and your line out, you're lost. They may have used something similar to this vest. These are basic buoyancy control device, BCD. They were diving with children with minimal gear, so they didn't have the option for controlling buoyancy. Plus, the divers were not able to communicate, and there was very low visibility. Again, it's like a mud puddle. You have so much debris and washout coming through with the mud and everything that washes through from the mouth and from the sides of Thailand. It clouds everything on top of trash that's going to float in with it. Certainly a challenge for an experienced diver, but for those kids, many thought it was impossible until today. Cave diving is the most dangerous and has the highest death rate for diving internationally. So to be able to get them out is, is a feat in itself. Libba Holland, count on two.